Hey everyone, how's it going? I finally made another tutorial and this is about how I color. So the first thing I do is I select the outside area of the image and then I select all the little nooks and crannies that I remember to select. And then I inverse the selection and contract it by one pixel. That way I can just fill it completely and then when I fill it, I usually go for the general skin color I'm trying to have for the image. Um, and then after I do that, I clean up the little places I missed or the sharper edges that the selection didn't get, like those right by the stems of the rose. Um, I go through, I check everything. The hair always has little bits and pieces that didn't get cleared away. And I erase them out. Then the, the legs and the shoes, and then there's one I miss, but I'll get to that one in a little while. So after I do that, I create a clipping layer above my base color, which is what I call that one, and I'll use that one several times throughout the image. And when you do a clipping layer, what it does is it doesn't go outside of the colored area. So you see right there, I'm kind of scribbling all around. Um, what that does is it just uh, it just makes it a little easier um, so you're not erasing constantly um, that's why another reason why I do the base color too because it kinda makes it easier to get rid of any outside lines uh, and that's why you kinda want a really clean base color too with it where you do have all the sharp points taken care of and stuff like that erased and cleaned and all that good stuff so I go through and I <clears throat> color. Some of it's a little tedious. I mean, I, you know, she has a moderately shaved head and so she, there's lots of kind of wild hairs going along this inside there. And I don't color the eyebrows with the hair. I do those separately because I think eyebrows, um, they're usually a little darker than the main hair. Um, I think that's how most eyebrows are in real color, in, in real people land. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to scribble out the outside of the hair and make sure it's a closed line and then I'll use the paint bucket and fill it in and there's always this little extra white line around everything so you, I just fill that all in. But it does make it go a lot faster and it's a little bit cleaner to do it that way. So I keep the hair after I choose the color I'm happy with, um, which is uh, Command U. I keep the hair as like the first uh, layer and then from then on I don't have to click the clipping layer every time um, so the shirt's gonna be uh, underneath the hair so I can kinda go wild in the coloring of that as well so you're not gonna see any of the scribbles because the hair layer is covering the shirt layer so you won't see any of that and it's just like you know little cheat sheet stuff you know I obviously color very simply and I don't do big, elaborate, lots of shiny things. I just color um, pretty cell, the cell coloring the way that uh, animations, I guess, do. So I try to stick to that kind of idea. Although I, uh, later when I do the shadows and highlights, I do use more of a painter style brush to get to the uh, more of a painter style, which not that it's painterly style. It is very cell shading like, but it is more painterly because I do use a or opacity and a and a kind of a translucent brush. Um, so through you know the rest of the next couple minutes, I just basically fill in uh, all the colors that I need. So her pants, her shoes. Whenever you see me cleaning up the lines, that means that next item is going to be above that item. So like the shirt, if you look there, uh, the shirt um, is covering the pant top part of the pants. So you, I don't need to worry about deleting that. Um, you'll see me grab selections after I finish each piece and what that is me doing is I'm deleting the scribbles outside of the line because if I if I let go of the clipping layer <clears throat> then it's going to uh, show the scribbles which I did that at one point uh, later in the video so I'll show you uh, what I mean by that um, so I'm almost done with the base colors for all of it um, I'm just going to have the rose and then her eyes next. Oh, and the stars tattoos too. 
this image was uh, based off of an, another image I had done um, that I never recorded, but I kind of wanted to redraw it. I felt the original one was a little awkward looking. And uh, I don't know if this one is not you know any less awkward looking but I don't I like it a little bit better I'll I'll post a link to it and over at my DeviantArt um, in the com in the <clears throat> description below <clears throat> sorry my voice is going out and I believe it has something to do with allergies so um, another thing I had done before I started everything um, was I created I con uh, made the line art I put it into a multiply rather than having it normal. The multiply makes the lines pop out more. There it is. That's the one I forgot. Uh, the multiply makes the lines pop out more, whereas if I had just stuck with that basic kind of reddish brown gray color I had originally, it would be kind of dull. So the multiply kind of made it more of a, it, it made the, col the color of the line art, I think personally, I think it makes it pop. Um, rather than just keeping it how I had it originally. Uh, so I'm going to finish up these hairs. I'm going to do an overlay on these stars because they are covered in uh, hair, so they're not going to be as blue as the uh, stars on the skin. So there it is. And so now we go into the shading process. There you go. See the flowers right there? That's what happens if I don't delete the scribbles. So you got a scribbly, uh, you'll have, the scribbles still exist until you delete them is what I'm trying to say. So I take my base layer and I make a copy of it and I place it on top of the entire image. I'll use that just for a little bit of depth later, later on. But what I do, and then I shut it off because right now I'm, I'm just more focused on making sure the colors I pick for the shading and the highlight are more um, matching because it's more, you know, I have to get this part done without the multiplied color base that I put on top of it, it's just so I can see that, you know, my colors match and, and everything like that. So I had just uh, taken the base layer, the base color layer again, and I copied that again, and then I deleted all the other stuff from it, and I made it the skin color, and then I kind of uh, pinked it up, made it a little more pink. And then you have to put on the transparent layer. There's a name for that. That just is totally escaping me right now. And that will prevent you from going outside of the actual layers color section. So by coloring with the transparency selected, I'm not going to go into the hair. I'm not going to go in the shirt. I'm not going to go into the stars. It's only going to be the skin layer. So, and what I do is I usually go a little off color. It's gone now, but it, um, where I go a little bit more of a red tone um, than the actual original skin color, and then I make it more in the darker red. So I don't, I don't do the blacks, the grays. You know, I try to get more of a warmer tone, and it's, I try to do the same thing for the the highlights too. You don't just go, oh, it's a highlight, it's white. Uh, you go and find a nice lighter tone that is complementary and makes it stand out the way you're trying to get it to stand out. Um, so after the first initial, and I always check to make sure it's coming along the way I want it to. So after I do that, oh, that was a cat jumping on my controller. <laughs> my keyboard. Um, after I do that, I check the tones and then I uh, I do one more layer of uh, shading that's a little bit darker and that always seems to kind of make it pop just a little bit more. The shoes, I, um, I never spend very much time on shoes. I really need to just spend a week drawing shoes in various styles. Like those crazy high heels that people wear and Everything's kind of based on a converse in my world because I wear converse a lot. So this is just me. I had a hard time with this rose. It, I could not get a color match for it, and so you'll see me restart again. It looked grayed out. It didn't look like what I was trying to do. I wanted it rich, and it looked more like white out than anything. So 
uh, mm, I think I eventually go into the contrast and uh, brightness and contrast and kind of play with that to make it look a little bit more natural. This looks really brown and I'm, you know, I don't know if I'm really happy how that rose actually turned out. Still not happy with it. Then I do the stems. Tattoos didn't need too much. They were just little bits of highlights for them. The pants, same thing. Go with a darker color, but make sure it's not like an exact darkness of the the pants themselves. Uh, fun fact, if you leave the trans... I need to look up that word. I should be Googling that right now. Um, if you leave the layer lock on, you will be deleting to the background color of the program or that, that you have so like it would have deleted to a gray so you have to take off the tran transparency lock oh I, mean, I need I need to have a little list of words next to me all these techniques can be used in CS4 and probably CS3 um, I'm using Photoshop CC but everything I am doing here I learned with CS4 and so these are all the same methods that you can use on Photoshop CS4 and all the same tips and tricks. One thing is you cannot select all the layers and put the transparency lock on it. It just it, you have to do it one by one. And that I'm happy they fixed that in the CC because that made that made my life just a, it saved me like 2 seconds, but I appreciated it anyway. Shirts and pants don't really have highlights unless they're leather and this girl's not wearing leather. She's just wearing a regular old t-shirt. And soon we'll be getting to the hair. Can you guys hear that? <laughs> anyway, um, I, I do apologize for the quality of mic I have. I They only had one at Best Buy and it's the one I bought. So I know there's probably this hum behind everything that is very loud and I do apologize for that my sound quality I am not a sound person so this is me in the hair the hair I use a really great brush and I got I actually got it from Lois Lois L-O-I-S-H um, Lois is how I say it in my head I am probably saying it completely wrong she's such an amazing artist I followed her for years over at Tumblr and DeviantArt, and she is such an inspiration. Um, you can go to her page, L O I S H. Just go to her DeviantArt. She, one of her pictures will have a link to all the brushes that she uses, and they are great. Um, when I am doing the detail, the shading, and stuff like that, I use her flat round brush, and I keep it at like I believe it's a well, it looks like it's a 79 transparency. But it's, I usually keep about 80 unless I'm going a little lighter in certain areas, which then I'll drop it down to 60. Um, when I'm done coloring the shadows and highlights of the hair, I go back with a large airbrush and I kind of go around the image with it. Um, one of the cool things I've learned from watching Mark Curley's videos so much is that, and it's just like when you're drawing an apple for art class, you know, even though there's a highlight there, it is still darker because there's a whole other side to that that we're not seeing and that's where the shadow is hitting so I always put a little a uh, little bit of the airbrushing on the back part of the head even though that should be where some of the higher even though that is where the most highlighted area is there technically is another side well not to her I draw two dimensional but if I drew three dimensional she would have another side so and if in this if this was three dimensional you wouldn't even have to worry about seeing her face because um, it's all hair, so all you'd be drawing is hair. Anyway, so I um, I always use a texture on my uh, artwork. It's a specific texture. I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, it's free, but it's always awesome to give the people who let us use that stuff credit. So by all means, stop by, use it, and thank him for all the, or her. I actually do not know. Thank them for all the uh, great stuff they do. And... I have a cat playing around here, so if you're hearing weird noises, I apologize. 
Anyway, if there's anything you would like to see me do, please tell me, and I will happily do that for you. And um, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Bye.